Hello and welcome to today's episode of Raw Code Live. I am your host, Raw Code. Today we're going to be taking a look at Loki, a tool for collecting logs uh, on bare metal, Kubernetes, and a whole bunch of other things from the team at Grafana. Now, before we get started and dive into Loki in a little bit more detail and get hands on, we just got a little bit of housekeeping. First and foremost, please, if you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, do that now. Uh, use the bell to get notifications for all future episodes. If you're not watching live, but you want to have a little bit of a conversation about what you see in today's episode or any other episode, then you can join the Discord server. We've got a couple of hundred uh, cloud native enthusiasts and Kubernetes people all talking about cloud native technologies and general technology. So come and join us, get involved. And lastly, I want to thank Equinix Metal. They are my employer, but they allow me to spend time during my working day producing this channel and these episodes so that we can all learn the vast cloud native landscape together. So thank you, Equinix Metal. You can use the code ROCK CODE for $200 of compute. You can spend that on just 50 hours or 400 hours. That is entirely up to you. Have some fun. Right now, today I am joined by Cyril Tavena from the Grafana team, a maintainer of the Loki project. Hi there. How are you? Hello, hello, David. Hey, uh, I'm good, thank you. And you? Yeah, I'm doing really well, thank you. Actually, I mean, I'm excited to dive into Loki and, and see how it can improve my logging pipelines. So, very excited for nice. this session. Nice. Do you want to give us a brief introduction about yourself, and then we'll kind of talk about Loki and what it is? Yeah, sure. So um, I've been working at Grafana for two years now, uh, and I'm a software engineer there. And I've mostly been involved with uh, Loki, a bit of Cortex, but most, mostly Loki. So um, I'm, a, I'm a Loki expert, so don't hesitate to ask any question regarding, uh, regarding Loki. <laughs> nice. Awesome. So why don't we kind of just talk about, like, what is Loki? Like, what what... what Give me the like the, the three word pitch if there is one. What does Loki do? Oh, free free world. That's I'm gonna need a bit more. But uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Look, it's uh, actually it's uh, five worlds. Five words. It's, it's it. like Prometheus. It's like Prometheus, but for the dogs. <laughs> 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 that's that's the idea but no uh, more seriously um it, it's a log aggregation system uh where you can send all your uh, application logs to and it will aggregate all of them in a central place where you can you know query them back uh, and it's heavily inspired by Prometheus. um one of the big difference that um, um it takes compared to other uh, system out there is that it doesn't really um, index the um, content itself, just uh, the metadata, a bit like Prometheus, you know, the, the, the labels, uh, how they work. In Loki, the idea is a bit the same. Uh, you index only the labels itself of the, of, the, of the workload, so not the content. And that makes it, you know, very uh, inexpensive to run uh, because the index is very small at the end of the day. Um, in some system, you can end up with a, an index that is actually bigger than the than the content itself. Um, yep. And so, in that in that case, that makes the operational uh, workload very uh, very difficult. Uh, and I think Loki, that's that's what um, it's nice with Loki. It's a bit easier to run. Um, so yeah, is it, easier to easier to run, easier, easier to scale too. Is it is it fair to say that Loki then is a database? Is that the correct way to look? Yeah. At it? So. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, since it has its own query language, I guess we could say that it's a database. Uh, the thing to note, though, is we rely on on, uh, on uh, shoulder of giants. Uh, we we uh, mostly allow people to save data uh, in in object storage uh, like uh, Google Cloud Storage or uh, S Amazon S3. Um, so we're not like really uh, storing the data uh, ourselves, but we do replication to make sure that, you know, when you ingest the data, uh, we don't lose if uh, the data, if there is any any node that is going down. We, um, so that's, yeah, that's the that's the idea. You can also um, store the data on disk if you're in, running the single uh, binary, and I believe that's what we're gonna do today. Um, in that case, um, you know, it's, it's, it's more for a single cluster. Um, so if you need to scale above that, like you have a lot of cluster, you're probably going to want to look at using an object store. Um, it's going to be easier anyway to um, uh, to operate, right? It's 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 easier than PVCs. Um, I'm pretty sure like everyone out there knows, you know, how difficult it can be um, to uh, operate a stateful set and PVCs. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure anyone watching who's run Stateful Workloads and Kubernetes knows exactly how easy yeah. all of that stuff is these days, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully the sarcasm can flew loud and clear there. <laughs> Stateful Workloads are, are, as much as I encourage it in Kubernetes, still a pain in the ass. <laughs> but, uh, let's get my screen shared. Uh, we have here the Grafana Loki webpage and documentation. Uh, yeah, there's the like Prometheus but for logs line that you gave me with the fibers. Exactly. So. <laughs> Uh, so, I, I mean, I kind of compared it to a database, but even in the, the first line here, and I know it's a, a little bit small, so let's just zoom in, but it says Loki is actually a set of components that can be composed in a fully featured logging stack. So do you want to break that down for us? What are the, what are the components of Loki? Yeah, so the um, so there's multiple way to run Loki. Um, today we're just gonna do a single binary, uh, a bit like Prometheus, which only scale um, vertically, um, and that's that's already good enough for a single cluster. Uh, but in fact, we created Loki for our own usage at Grafana, so that we can receive terabyte of data from a customer uh, around the world. So Loki can also scale uh, using a distributed uh, version, which is split into multiple components. Um, so there's, you know, there, there, there's a lot of different components in, in the system, but the idea is there's a distributors that will receive the data uh, and validate the data, then it will pass it down to ingesters. Ingesters are, are basically compressing the data um, and um, saving that in the object store. Uh, and then after, you know, uh, you have the queries that will uh, query back the data. Um, yeah, so this this schema here that we're looking at is is uh, is a bit uh, sum summarizing what I'm saying. Like, there's two ways uh, to run Loki. Uh, today we're just going to go with the simple one. There's a more complex one. Um, if you're really into it, you have time. You you know, uh, you want to you want to run Loki with uh, <laughs> uh, at at very large scale. Uh, then then you can use that. Is that these these are the components you mentioned, right? Uh, distributor, ingester, exactly. query yeah. front end, and, and query, end. and this is yeah. all documented and uh, well, pretty yeah, easy exactly. to find at yeah. the root of the documentation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you want to know more, I guess we we're not gonna go through too much uh, into this because you know, like every distributed system, uh, it's kind of complex. We could talk for hours about this. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, but I mean, that's that's it, the it, idea. It's nice to talk about it and to have a nice overview of the different components and the potential architectures. But you know, we we really yep. just want to get hands on with this, don't we? We want to kick the tires. We want to play with it. We want to see how cool it is, and people can in your own time feel free to jump into the docs and do a bit of a deeper dive there. Yep. Yeah, there's there's lots going on here. So <laughs> there's a lot of documentation about it. We try to be very transparent about what we're we're building here. Yeah, good documentation is something that I love to see on this show. Um, I wish it was like the the standard for all open source projects, but that's not the case. And I'll include my own in that. My documentation for all of my projects is the worst documentation in the world. So I really appreciate it when I find other projects with great. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a team effort. And uh, we recently got uh, a new hire in the team who is going to, who is actually a technical mm. writer. So he's going to spend a lot of time um, improving this documentation. So all of this has been written so far by developers, so, you know. Nice. It is how it is. <laughs> okay, so we are going to, I have prepared, let's do the what have I done up front component of the show. Uh, I have a Kubernetes cluster running on Equinix Metal. It has nothing in the default namespace, but we do have the Weaveworks. Uh, oh, where's my, why is it not all complete? Oh, there we go. Uh, we do have the Weaveworks Sock Shop microservice demo deployed to the cluster. Um, I just did that to create some arbitrary noise, hopefully get some logs into, yeah. into Loki. Uh, we may decide to deploy something else that's perfectly all right, but I just thought I'd give us maybe a little bit of a head start with some of the boring stuff there. And of course, we do yeah. have the control plane if we want to get the logs out of that too. And something you mentioned as we were chatting just before we went live is that you can get quite meta with this. Loki can read its own yeah. logs. <laughs> so maybe yeah, we'll exactly. have a, bit, a, a little bit of fun with that as well. Uh, now there's various installation methods. We can go with, with Tanka. Um, I think I'm going to avoid that today. I think the whole Tanka thing is something we could do an entirely own episode on about yep. what Tanka is and how to do it. Do you want to share anything about Tanka before we jump into Helm, though? Do you want to give um, us like yeah, a uh, that's mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Tanka is, is it's really the same purpose as Helm is, you know, deploying, uh, you know, 
describing your infrastructure uh, and, and your workload with uh, code, except that we use JSONet and not, um, I think it's, what's the, uh, the template, the Go template, I think. Go is template, in yeah. Elm. But, yeah. And so with Tenka, we use JSONet, which is a, a language that is a bit more flexible, uh, but it's, it's also less uh, well-known and a bit more difficult to learn. Uh, but it has this this nice flexibility, um, and that's what we use at Grafana Labs to deploy um, uh, the, all the workload that we have. So that's why the, we we recommend Tenka because you know, there's more chance that you're gonna have um, you know the latest version because we we try to uh, always make uh, Tenka up to date. But Elm is more like a community, so we don't uh, we don't you know we don't we don't ourselves uh, look at uh, Elm that much, uh, and we don't run it with Elm uh, on our side. So it's easier for us to help you if you're using Tenka. Yeah. Uh, but Elm, you know, I, I've been using it too uh, for um, deploying uh, Loki for testing, and it's 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 working, you know, like a charm too. Nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of add one thing here. I, th I think Helm is great, but I really dislike Go templates, and I find it really difficult to maintain my Helm charts with the amount of options yeah. that users want well trying to make it still legible readable understandable all these things it can be really difficult and i, I love seeing your tooling in this space come up to try and hope, hopefully solve some of those challenges so yeah i'd love to do a tank episode one day for sure yeah one of the one of the big win that i like with tanker uh, this is something that happened to me a lot uh in the in my previous experience is um how many times have you deployed uh, an application in the wrong cluster like in production <laughs> or you have applied apply the change because the context your context was not the right one uh tank tanker doesn't really rely on on your current context it relies on the um context that is set in the folder so often you know uh, there's a just there's a JSON file that describes the the cluster that you should be targeting for that folder, and it will always you know target that one. So there's less chance to make a mistake like deploying an update in pod or removing a pod in pod or anything like that. Yeah, uh, I, I do that all the time. I'm juggling so <laughs> many clusters uh, for these episodes, for my day job, for my open source projects, and I should get better at using Dart Env and having cube configs thrown around, or even just better tooling for my context. But I, I, I do it all the time. I'm always deploying stuff to Docker for Mac that I mean to put somewhere else or to the wrong. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's jump. You wanted the... you wanted to do Docker for Mac and uh, Docker for Mac, and instead you deployed Pod. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, because I also have a show called Clustered where I have to spin up like multiple clusters every week. And one of the things I keep doing is deploying cluster API to my production cluster instead of Docker for Mac. And it's, uh, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Anyway, I'm going to rant about that another day, not today. What we'll do today yep. is uh, add our Helm repository. Uh, yeah, I don't have to check my context because I already ran get nodes and get pods. I'm good. Okay. Uh, you, you gave me the fear now. <laughs> Uh, we'll run our <laughs> repository update, which I don't think I probably needed with the repo add, but it's all good. Uh, and what I see here is we have a couple of options for deploying Loki to our, our cluster. Mm -hmm. um, we've got something called a Loki stack. We've got a Loki stack with a PVC. We've got a slightly different Loki stack. Yep. Uh, you want to run us through these options if you don't mind? Yeah, they're, they're just, uh, so Loki stack is really a, an umbrella chart uh, and a lot of people are using it just to get started and, and play with the, the whole stack of Loki, Pomte plus Grafana uh, and, and added bonus parameters too. So um, all of those different type of installation, just, you know, activate, deactivate one of the component or, or, or persistent volume or depending on what you're looking for. You can even just use Fluentbit if you want to use Fluentbit instead of Pomtail. So yeah. this is just values. It's it's the same stack, but with values, um, you know, configuration enable and disable. I would suggest that we go with the, yeah, the one you have your mouse on, uh, the one that uh, deploys Grafana and Prometheus. Yeah, let's okay. go with this one. So for i know what fluent bit is i mean, I, I know I've, I've used that a fair bit in my career i have never used prom tail can you give me the what what is is that just a yeah no that's <laughs> a very good very good question uh, david um the 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 idea of um of prom tail is you know there's already a lot of client for fetching logs but there's none of them that really um mimic the service discovery from prometheus 
Uh, and that's all the reason why we have Hometail. We wanted to have the same experience as you will install Prometheus, configure your um, labels to be extracted uh, and fetched with the Kubernetes service discovery. Uh, and Promptail is exactly the same configuration. So you have more chance to have the same label set for the workload uh, for your logs and your metrics if you're using Promptail than using Freenbit. It's a bit more difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's going to be more difficult. So if you're coming from Promptail's world, Promptail will be much more easier to configure. All right, awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, so we're going to deploy Loki, Loki stack with Promptail. Uh, now I'm curious, one last thing, and we'll go on to something a bit more interesting, but uh, we have an option for Weaven without a PVC. Um, I'm going to deploy the one without, even though we do have the ability to have persistent volumes on our cluster. But I'm just curious, if I do it without the PVC, does that mean if Loki restarts, we lose our data? Or is it using host yeah. path or something else? Yeah, no. Um, I, I don't think it by default it uses host path. So you will lose the data if you restart, yeah. And we're OK uh, with that for today, it's... right? So. <laughs> yeah, we're OK with that, yeah, definitely. Uh, I never told you, we're, we're deploying us into prod today for my real work cluster. So I should probably have used PVC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too, yeah. You, you want okay. to use PVC if, you, yeah, if you're deploying on a production cluster or anything like that. All right, so did this create a no namespace? I'm assuming we've got some stuff in our default. Uh, there we go, nice. Okay. Yeah, everything is starting, yeah. So I see Loki zero. That means we've got a stateful set running here with, with one pod. I'm going to assume. Uh, we've got Grafana, yep. Cube State Metrics, nice. We don't have to deploy that. That is always a win. Uh, we've got the Prometheus stack that we're all know and comfortable with. And then we have yep. Prompt Tales, four of them. I'm assuming that is a demon set based on the four. It is, yep. Correct. Yeah, I, I know some stuff. I'm not, you know, not really <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> uh, no, that, so the idea is Prompt Tales is going to run on each of the nodes. Uh, and it's going to need, so by the way, I, I hope that this is going to be fine, but it's going to need to access the host path of the node so that it can um, get the Docker logs uh, from the daemon itself. Uh, and then it's going to tail those files. And with the service discovery, you're going to be able to attach uh, Kubernetes metadata uh, to the logs and send them to Loki. Awesome. Well, let's give that just a, a moment to kind of get healthy, get happy. And um, we do have a question from our audience. So I'm going to pop that on the screen. Uh, but Raja Silan has asked, uh, they've not read the manual pages yet, but I do love the use of RTFM, by the way. So props to that. <laughs> but can I use this to create a dynamic? Oh, no, see, I was too busy enjoying RTFM. Uh, but can I use this to create a dynamic dashboard with logs that I put into the system so I can get a dashboard to view the logs? So uh, does that make sense to you? Can I, guess, I use? <laughs> oh no, I'll pull it back up one more time. I think what they're asking is, <laughs> is, can I use this to create a dashboard that just shows me the logs that I'm putting into the system? I think that is the. the you question. yeah, you can create a dash yeah, you can create a dashboard. So yeah, Grafana now supports uh, log panel. Um, so not only you can use explore to directly uh, explore the logs uh, of your workload, but you can also build a metric dash dashboard that you you were before, and then add the logs within. Well, we, we might be able to do that today. I think that's gonna yeah, be fun. To that do. sounds like a great idea. Um, I guess. All right, let me throw. It. Okay, we've deployed this, and I know I should go back to the docs, but I've got you right in front of me, so I'm just going to throw it at you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because we have the prompt tail running as a daemon set, because we have deployed this all together. I'm assuming if I just browse to Grafana, I would expect Promptail to already be shipping all of my containers logs to Loki, and we can probably start to query that right away. Is is that where? Yeah, we're, yeah. I expect the same thing, but you know <laughs> how, how it is live. So let's see. Yeah, I expect that normally um, when you when you get the the stack working, you should be able to uh, to directly start looking at the logs. Okay, I'm, I'm going to assume, like, you know, Prometheus does ship a really basic UI out of the box. Does Loki do anything like that, or does it really rely no. on Grafana? Okay. It does, it does, uh, it does uh, expose some sort of a UI, but nothing really, uh, um, nothing really useful for us here. Um, it's more from an operator perspective, so it's better that we look at Grafana. Grafana is more the, the UI for this. All right. Uh, is it going to be admin admin, or am I going to have to find a secret in the cluster? Ha! Ah, I think <laughs> it is admin. Oh, it's not. Yeah. All right. Let's um, uh, uh, export my cube config. Let's get a secret. I, th I think I think there is one already. I'm wondering what it is. 
It's not so you tried admin admin, huh? I, I did, yeah. There is a there is a Loki Grafana secret here. I'm gonna assume it's there. Uh what I'll do is I'll just pop yeah, up a follow-up question um which you can tackle while I do the boring bit. So use case. I get a bunch of syslogs from different hosts, put them into Loki, use Grafana to view and inspect. I think the answer is yes. Yeah. I think that's what we're, we're hopefully just about to do. <laughs> Sorry, I answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. You're, you're right. Um, I think the question is really towards syslog, which is less Kubernetes. Uh, but yeah, you can do that. With the the, the, the Pontail supports uh, syslog receiver. So you can start Pontail. Uh, it will run as a as a uh, syslog server. You can send the log to uh, Pontail directly from all your different devices that you have, and it will ship them to uh, to Loki. All right. Uh, I'm not going to decode the username. I'm just going to hope that's the base64 hash for admin. <laughs> yeah. No, maybe not. Oh, no, <laughs> that's just copied it when I highlighted it. That's, that's silly me. There so, we go. Nice. Right. Yay. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, although, otherwise, we could have just reinstalled it and changed the password. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll do this the, we'll do this the installable way. So, it looks like we don't um, have any starred dashboards at least, but has it created anything? No, but we we do have a no, there's no dashboard when you start, but there is a there's a data source though, I think. If you look at uh it's in yeah, this one, data sources. Yeah. Yeah, we can see already Loki and Prometheus are connected. Uh, yeah, we'll try yeah. that. Okay, so we do have them connected, that's great. I guess in theory. We can jump straight yep. into explore and begin to mm -hmm. see what we have available to us. So, yeah, so you need to select a data source at the top, I believe. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my, my first question then is, how do we interact with Loki? Uh, I'm assuming it's not used in PromQL. I'm assuming there's a Loki query language. Do you want to walk us through this? Yeah, so uh, we call it LogQL, um, Log Query Language. And uh, so there's a documentation on Grafana that is very extensive on, on, on everything that you can do with LogQL. But the idea is, is really um, inspired by Prometheus again. So the label selector uh, to select uh, a metric, but for us, there's no metrics. So it's just the label set selector or label matches uh, will be the same. So you could you know choose one of them and it will um, write the query for you. So let's let's go to app and select one. Well, we start with the meta query of app Loki. <laughs> yeah, let's let's start with that. Yeah. Oh, it, it kind of does look like uh, PromQL, at least the label selector syntax, right? Yeah, we're on an old version of Grafana, so. Um, it needs to. Um, it needs to. You need to manually set metric or logs at the top, uh, as you can see. Uh, there's a, a switch button. Yeah, if you click on logs, yeah, you can rerun the query now. All right. Uh, yeah. Should we should we try to update it before uh, going further? Maybe. Do you think that's? Uh... You want to upgrade Grafana? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. So uh, let me just look at the... called Loki Grafana. I actually just want to pop the image to the latest, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do that. Good. Uh, all right. So, do you know the version, or should I go to Docker? Uh, I, I was about to look at uh, Docker. What's the latest one? Um, uh, R Grafana. Seven point five, I think. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with it. Even if it's an experimental one, <laughs> it's gonna be better. It, it's gonna be better. That this is like a year ago uh, version that we're looking at right now. Uh, all right. Let's see what was um, updated recently. Let's let's see. Shall we go nightly? <laughs> Nice. <laughs> risky. Uh, seven point five is a good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with this. I believe Grafana yeah, eight is currently in progress, right? Is, is that Sorry? is Grafana eight being worked on at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen something on Twitter recently about some big changes to like the, the I think all the graphing panels are being redone and and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very the excited. the Grafa, Yeah. Every every major version is once a year. Nice. So let's just see if it's just initializing. Let's assume the port forward is going to. Yeah, oh, no, I, I think the password's going to be on the same too. You think? Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't forget, I work on Loki. Uh, I'm, I'm good with Grafana, but I'm not an expert on Grafana. Right, okay. I'll cut you some slack then. Uh, 
Uh, okay, that port forward. Maybe it's just not ready yet. Yeah, it wasn't there. Get pod. Fana. Yeah, it looks better now. Yep. Should have saved it. <laughs> Should have saved the password. <laughs> Passwords the same. We're back in. Nice. Uh, we're on the Loki stores and we no longer have the logs and metrics. But yeah. does that mean it's just working out? Yeah. Yeah, look, this is all great. This is going to be way much easier for us to uh, write queries and, and play with this. All right. Awesome. So, what do we have here? Like, this is, I mean, I'm trying to guess what we've got. And I think we kind of briefly covered it, but we're using LogQL. We're looking for all of our container logs from Kubernetes where there yep. was a label that existed called app, where the value is located. Mm -hmm. so we're querying the logs of ourselves. What we have yep. here appears to be some sort of uh, time series chart to show the occurrence of logs over time. And then we, is this just raw logs that we have below? That's, yeah, that's the raw logs. Um, you, I think you have a, a version of a, a Kubernetes that um, is using Creo logs. Um, so you can see like the STDRF, this is the Creo format. Um, and we can we can configure Pomptail to get rid of that if we want, um, because that's going to be um, a bit difficult to pass after if we need to pass it. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the raw log actually from from uh, the Docker daemon uh, of each node. Okay. Uh, and yeah, we can see the we can see the the labels here. They're, they're looking good so far. So this is the this top bit here is just the labels from the Kubernetes resource, and then the detected fields yeah. is just the analyzing the log line itself and trying to work out what it exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's directly from Grafana itself. Uh, it's not from Loki. So Grafana, when it's you know showing those lines, uh, it tries to detect some sort of uh, fields and and does some um, uh, analysis on it. All right, nice. Same goes for the the color. You see that the, the color it's all uh, green so far. It's because it hasn't um, found any errors. So Grafana will try automatically to spot uh, the errors in red for you. Okay, nice. Uh, all right. Looks like we have a, a couple of questions that I'll drop up just now. So Moz is asking, does Loki support other log shipping tools like FluentBit, FluentD, FileBeats, or is it exclusive to Promptail? Um, we have kind of answered no, that, we but do, I'll yeah. let you I'll let yeah. you go for it again. <laughs> Yeah, we, we support all of them, the, um, except FileBit, because FileBit doesn't really have uh, a way to plug in uh, an, in, an output um, uh, client. Uh, but we do have a Logstash, so you can do FileBit to Logstash to Loki if you want. Uh, but yeah, we support FluentBit, FluentD. Um, I think we also support Vector, which is in Rust. We like we have a Docker driver also, so there's like. There's no reason to uh, to not send the uh, data to Loki. Like, uh, yeah, we have, we have one of them. There's a, a follow up comment as well from Frank, who's actually just suggesting, "Hey, Loki has a REST API, so really you could use anything to send the logs." Yeah, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, all right, one more question, and then we'll we'll get back to our demo. Um, Adso is saying they're looking to adopt Loki. They want to adopt Loki, but they're curious about handling um, high throughput or high scale. Uh, an example they've got there is roughly seven terabytes per day. Yeah, is that, is that within the realm of Loki? Is is that good numbers, bad numbers? What's your thoughts? Yeah, it is. It is in the realm uh, of Loki. Um, it's difficult for me to think about this per day because I'm usually thinking about this per minute. Uh, but it, it, there, there won't be any issue uh, for uh, ingesting that amount of data. It's going to be actually very, uh, very easy. Now, if you want to query over this huge amount of data, you may have to go into the distributed setup. Um, but I will start always with uh, starting with a small Loki instance, see how it goes. And if you need to scale up, then at that time, start to look at the more difficult scenario. Yeah, I think that's great advice for all software. Start with easy mode. And when the, the car starts to shake at high speed, yeah. maybe do some upgrades. OK, uh, so this was cool. We created some logs. Uh, what do you want to, sh what should we try and do next with this then? 
Um, so there's multiple multiple options that we could do. I think we we need to fix this um, this uh, um, log line format here uh, because it, you know that this F uh, and SDDR um, is really about the Cayo and it doesn't really help us. Um, so we can try to fix this. It's um, we need to look at the configuration uh, of uh, Palmtail to do that, um, and then after I guess we can maybe show how the dashboarding works with Loki. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, yeah, so uh, we need to look at the M chart, how we can change the configuration. It's very easy. We just need to actually add a single line. But I, I'm not sure we can do it uh, without creating a value file. So let me... Oh, well, we can just it. modify the config map in line though, right? I don't need to redeploy yeah. this with Helm anymore. So I'm quite happy just to modify the config map in the cluster. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, uh, so let's go down. I'm looking for pipeline stages, uh, which basically, yeah, that's it. So we're, we're set up for Docker. That's not what we have here. We have um, container. So basically, D. yeah, we have, yeah, exactly. So we need to change. And it's CRI. You just need to change that to CRI. Yeah. And that should do it. Um, and maybe that's the case also if you try this at home. I know that Kubernetes, the latest version, is going towards CI um, before it was Docker format. And the Docker format is it's kind of like a JSON log. Uh, so you can quickly identify which one you have. It's, if you have the, the one we had today, like a STDR, it means it's a CI. If you have a JSON and you are not logging in JSON, it's most likely because you are using the Docker uh, format. All right. Well, I've triggered a rollout of that daemon set. Let's just give that, uh, hopefully not too long. I guess maybe about a minute for it to, to run through them all. Yeah, it should be, no, it should be quick. Nice, uh, nice, uh, keep cut all the skills that you have, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I like to learn things the hard way. So, <laughs> uh, live debugging is getting easier for me these days. Um, Okay. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> we have uh, another question. So let's answer this question. Hopefully the, the rollout has, has done its job and uh, we'll do some dashboarding. And dig in, hopefully we can dig into LogQL a bit more and, and see. Yeah. Um, and of course, like, well, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to this naturally, but how do we turn on indexing for specific fields and, and the process of doing that? Anyway, question. Yeah. So Jorgen is asking, okay, there's Fluent E Fluent, but Telegraph, Loki, can you briefly position those components which are overlapping more or less second question uh, well let's start with the first <laughs> so fluent d fluent bit telegraph loki i think you're going things are all in the same space you want to elaborate on that at all um yeah i think they are overlapping um and uh, it's it's a bit like free and um i guess you know it's in ruby so the the the, the people that created free and realize oh uh, maybe we need to uh, move away from Ruby and, and write a, a C++ client. So that's how I guess Fluent Bit came to life. Um, Telegraph, I don't think Telegraph has a, has a low-key output. Um, I, I don't think that's the case. I think it can only, only send to Influx from what I know. Um, uh, Telegraph can write to Influx, Elasticsearch, um, HTTP endpoints, uh, and gRPC. It, it supports a whole bunch of things. I don't think there is a native low-key output yeah. Yet, um, but you could probably do it with the HTTP output. I would have thought. Uh, I'll I'll hack on that one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, definitely. I mean, Loki is really the database. Um, uh, Fluent D, Fluent B, Telegraph are more agent, right, for collecting data. So that's that's the biggest difference. Um, so Loki doesn't really overlap with all of those. It just needs someone to send the logs to uh, to to uh, to itself. All right. And uh, the second part of that question was. With regards yeah. to the recent license change on the Grafana products, is Loki a part of that? I guess, is Loki now a GPL? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, um, so I don't remember. I think it was last week uh, this change happened, uh, which was before we uh, we talked together, uh, David. And yeah, um, not everything is uh, a GPL uh, in, in, in Loki. Um, um, mostly everything that is client, so Pontail, Fluendi, Fluendbit, um, everything that the user um, you know um, will use to send uh, data, but also to uh, process the log line itself is not a GPL. It's still Apache two, so you can all or, you know you can you can uh, you can use that in your uh, open source project if you need to without having uh, to um, 
a license a gpl your own uh, project now uh, for most people they, they usually don't integrate loki itself but more the client so it shouldn't really affect anyone all right nice thanks for clearing that up okay we have now rotated our prompt tail we have switched the pipeline stage from docker to container runtime interface yeah, it's and running, it's... so that's a good sign. <laughs> well, yeah, we didn't break it. That's great. So let's the last five minutes. This is already refreshing, and we have much cleaner log lines sitting here now, right? Yes, this, this is what you yeah. want. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was expecting. This is exactly um, like the, what what you would expect from your application. Nothing else from the infrastructure behind. So that's much better. All right, uh, we got confirmation from Stanislav there that Telegraph does now have a Loki output. So that's great. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't know about this. Nice. I worked for Influx for two years and I didn't know about it, so uh, I, I wouldn't judge you for missing it. Uh, <laughs> all right. um, yeah, I mean, we can play with the log browser. The log browser is a new feature. I really like it. So you can click on that and see and see how that goes. Okay, so what do you want me to click on? Sorry. Uh, next to the next to the query, um, there's a there's a button named uh, log browser. With a little chevron, yeah. With a shovel? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's on the left. Oh, right, right. Left. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. this one. Yeah. So this, you know, if you're a bit scared of LogQL at first, this is a nice way to get started. So at the top, you can you know see all the available label names. Uh, so and also that's a, a good way to see if you're wasting or using things that you shouldn't be using. Um, but you can click on, for instance, on job one, the job, the job is a, an interesting one. Um, and once you do that, you see all the, um, all the, the, the values that exist for this one. Um, and that's kind of a, a nice way to browse your data without being an, uh, an expert in, uh, in LoQL or, or knowing how to, uh, to use that language. Um, so yeah, you, you you can select one that you uh, you, you you want to uh, maybe Grafana, Loki Grafana if you want the default one. So job is basically a namespace plus uh, contain name. That's what it is. Okay. And then yeah, so you can sh yeah show logs. And there's no log for that one, <laughs> or maybe not no log for yeah. Last hour, yeah, there were. So uh, if you if you're running, I don't know if we're running currently uh, a deployment that are that has more than multiple uh, the, more than one uh, pod. Do you do we have that? I don't. I'm not sure. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see what we've got in the stock shop. We can always scale one of these up. Oh, everything uh, is one. <laughs> yeah, let's just modify one. So let's get this a little bit more interesting. We're gonna do edit deployment. Uh, Let's modify orders. Should we yeah, check the logs just... first to make sure they output log? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's make sure there is log. But yeah, um, yeah. whatever logs there is, yeah, that's good. Yeah, let's go with this. Just All want right. to show you know that uh, with Loki, you can you can uh, find logs for a single pod if you need to uh, using the labels. Uh, orders replicas. Yeah, it's good. There we go. Oh, yeah, six. It's a big cluster. We might as well have fun <laughs> with it. True, so. <laughs> true. Sure. Sure. All right, so this was our orders sock shop. So I'm going to try and use yeah. the log browser. I'm going to use the yeah. app, turn off job. Oh, I really should have checked the labels, shouldn't I? Uh, um, maybe order. Maybe it's name order. No. Deploy order. Let's see, what labels do we have? Name orders. All right. The name orders. Uh, and we have a few options here. So why don't we talk about that? So we already clicked on show logs. It showed us all the logs yeah. from those pods. What are the other two options here? Um, so show log rate will, I believe, um, create a, a metric query out of the selector to show um, the log rate of that stream. So we, we call it stream um, uh, set of 
uh, log from uh, one or more different uh, pod. And this will just show the rate of it. Um, and validate is just basically trying to see if the, the query that you craft is actually valid uh, because you can change it manually. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's valid. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's see the, yeah. the logs. And yep, these are the logs yeah. from that process. Uh, yeah, I, so... I think I've picked a Java one, unfortunately. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. No, it's okay. We're not going to pass it too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's. What we could. Uh, what we could do is uh, look a bit about um, the labels. If they are, if if you can see if they are from different uh, pods. So if you expand uh, a couple of lines, you should be able to see that uh, the pod is different from time to time. Yeah, this is this one. It's so would we be same. able to? Like because this, like with LogQL, could I actually group by the pod and see how many different pods there are? Yeah, we can do that. Let's do that. Um, so I'm gonna help you to write this down. Um, we're gonna rate at the beginning. All right. Uh, All right. Actually, we're gonna do a well, yeah. Do rate uh, and then uh, open parentheses. Yeah. So that's exactly like PongQL. You, you should feel. Uh... So uh, yeah, you have the selector, the range selector here. So it's bracket. Square, square bracket. And then, uh, yeah, select interval. Interval will automatically, uh, the first one, yeah, automatically select the interval that we are using uh, on the range uh, currently. Okay. And uh, you can run that. If there is not too many label issues, it should go fine. Uh, Let's run that to see. Oh, I can't hit return. <laughs> Yeah, you can hit the, the blue button at the top. I don't remember what's the key. Uh, yeah. It's probably command enter or something, isn't it? Yeah. So. Yeah, so we need to... Uh, maybe, I think the um, interval was maybe just too is, big here. Uh, the, yeah, the top, the, the, the time shift. If you look at the top next to clear all, um, yeah. The, yeah, click on this button next to the, the loop. Oh, uh, yep. Now, no, it's more on the left, not the clear all, not this one. <laughs> yeah, left again. Oh, yeah, again. Oh, yeah, that one. One. yeah, yeah. Let's change it to maybe five minutes or fifteen minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um and yeah, we, we can so it shows too many labels right now. So um if you know Prometheus, you can do a sum by to aggregate uh by pod. Um I think it's pod. Yeah. You can do a sum by pod. Uh, you can wrap everything by with a sum by pod sum, and then yeah, no. So there's no there's a space between uh, yeah, there's a space between sum and by. Yeah, and then open parenthesis. Right after the pod, yeah pod, close the parenthesis, and then you wrap everything into parenthesis. The 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 at the end, yeah. Is that right? So you need to wrap it again. Yeah, you need to wrap again the rate uh, into parenthesis one more time. That's how, uh, that's how, yeah. Yeah. So that's going to send by pod this time. Yeah, so it's going to remove all the label dimension and only keep the pod. Ah, there we go. Nice. Yeah. So this, this, uh, this pod doesn't seem to log uh, a lot yeah. just at the beginning when it starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's the, the pod all started up, it's about a little bit of log. I mean, we're not browsing to the sock shop. We're not adding things to carts and trying to cause more log data we we could definitely do that if we want but um, i think we we've seen what we wanted to see here and we've seen a burst yeah, of you log can see right, yeah we mm -hmm. you know it's nice I'm, i mean I, I don't think i understand log ql in great depth or anything but i like the familiarity with prom ql and um, it's not yeah. too dissimilar uh, so i think i could probably work my way through a few examples there so that's pretty cool yeah I think that's the idea of why uh, LogQL is heavily inspired by uh, PromQL, is to make it simple for people that are already, uh, you know, uh, comfortable with PromQL uh, to learn this this new language. Um, and if there's something that I can add is if if you were a scholar up to the query, is in uh, in Loki um, the only difference. Uh, between LogQL and PropQL is the log queries. So this is a metric query because it output a metric query. So all the metric queries are very uh, exactly the same as in PromQL. The log queries where you can search word uh, or regex word or grep word, those use pipe. Uh, and those are more uh, new to the, to the, to the, uh, to the space. 
Okay, so could we uh, search for default lifecycle processor? Yeah, I think we could. We could. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Um, so you need to let. Let's add another query. Keep keep that query here and create a new one. Um, there's a button add query. Yeah, and then yeah. So you can do a name. So um, open. Uh, you know exactly. Yeah, write the same selector. And then after at the end, when you want to look for a world, it is a pipe equal. If you want to do a search pipe equal, and then space, and then yeah. You put the the world that you want to find. Um, so this is case sensitive. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, no, it's gonna. Yeah, that should be that should be fine. So if you run that, it will run both query, um, and it hasn't fine. I think we um, we may have fallen out of the five minute window. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been so about can, five minutes yeah. since we started uh, since we scaled that up. So I was kind of watching for it. But... Yeah, so we found a 40 uh, line that contained that world um, across all the pods, right? Okay. Um, and that's 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 a kind of like a grep. Um, so there's so there's multiple option. Um, here we do a, a a match of the world, but we can do a regex, which is a, instead of using pipe equal, it's pipe tilde, and then you can write uh, regex. So obviously that's a valid regex. What you what you have here too. Um, but you could write, um, yeah. You can show me your uh, every two skill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it simple, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Good, good call. But uh, yeah, you can you can write. This is how you and you can chain them. So um, you could do, uh, you know, it contains uh, the default, but you can chain another one at the end. Um, so if you go at the end and you go another pipe you call, you can have a, another one. Yeah, you can chain right. multiple of them. Default. So the buff clause needs to be fulfilled. Sorry, can you say that last bit again? Yeah, both both uh, both of those clauses need to be fulfilled. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any raw code logs, but it did filter on default lifecycle, which is what I wanted. Just throwing yeah. in random bits of regex, just to you know, just to check that it works. Um, I guess. Yeah, so you can chain right. as much as you want, and then after there is the negative one. So if you need to, you can instead of pipe, you can do exclamation mark, and that's going to do the negative one. So everything that doesn't contain. All right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I should probably just return nothing. I would have thought. That. Oh no, there's uh, other defaults that aren't life cycle. Okay, that yeah. actually worked then. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I like the, that the, the exclamation mark. chaining thing. You know, it feels like a data transformation. You know, I've got all of my logs. I want to do a filter. I want to do a filter. I want to do a filter, and I want to get something at the end. And it, it's again intuitive and you know similar to some programming languages that I've worked with as well. So uh, I yeah, like that. that's the the idea is is it should feel like a CLI a bit. So you're piping uh, and processing, uh, you know, from left to right data. That's that's the uh, that's the idea. Um, so that's that's the search search are so that's the most powerful way to search um, data. Um, if you look at your first query at the top, you can insert the search in between the square bracket and the uh, label matcher to count uh, the rate of logs, but for only a, you know specific word. So is that just so this bit here? You can you can copy everything and oh. replace the label match at the top here. Um, only the yeah to this yeah replace this yeah and then run that. Nice. Right. So yeah, um, it's I don't know if it's it, it, there's not enough data I think to show. Um, maybe try uh, to yeah. There might not be enough data for the the rate to show, but uh... the rate to show yeah. But the the apparently there is one point somewhere. I'm not sure where it is because it shows like a <laughs> zero to two. Yeah, no idea. Uh, but try to uh, to to like uh, um, do a, a search that hits uh, a bit more without the the signal. Yeah, pickaxe. let's take off the. Or, or you can switch also to another container. Maybe look here. Yeah, here we go. So it's not the most, not 
<laughs> most nice uh, graph that I've seen, <laughs> you know. Okay, so um, we can use not just a label selector and a metric queries, but a, a full log yes. query to do the filtering and then perform aggregations or metrics on top of those log data, which is very nice indeed. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So you can do search, and once you have your search, so for instance, you could look at, you know, um, do I have an error in the last six hour? And if you find an error, you can try to look at was this error there yesterday too? And you can start to do a rate and look at, you know, since when um, this error is happening, how often it's happening. So you can do those kind of uh, operation. Um, and so to remember everything that is inside uh, parenthesis, um, and it's the selector of the stream of the, the, the actual log. And everything that is a function uh, will be used to um, extract metric. So like in Prometheus, piping goes with log and then function goes with metric. Okay, cool. Uh, you have to take a couple more questions from the audience just now before we move on? Yeah. Uh, okay, so we got a question here from Andres. Uh, how does Loki compare to gray log or log stash? Yeah. Um, so log stash it doesn't really compare to because Logstash is a, is an agent. Uh, but if we look at Promtail and uh, Logstash, I think Promtail is in Go. Um, and as I was saying at the beginning, um, the service discovery to uh, find the labels is very much the same as uh, Promotus. So that's the big difference. Logstash is a, is a bit more... Um, is a bit more focused on, um, you know, working on your logs and... and um, modifying them or, or aggregating and, and transforming the logs. Uh, Promtail does that a bit, but that's not the root. Uh, the, the, that's why that's not why we created Promtail. It's more like to ship logs. Um, and gray logs, I mean, I've, I never really use gray log, but I know exactly what it is. And it's the same idea. Um, Loki and, and gray logs are, have the same purpose. You can send logs to, uh, to, to gray log and uh, aggregate it. Um, so I think the biggest difference is that Loki is inspired by Prometheus. So if you're already running Prometheus, it makes your experience a bit more easier. And it's all integrated in Grafana. And I don't think gray log is supported in Grafana. So what do you, you know, let's just assume I'm an mm -hmm. operator for a production Kubernetes cluster. We have all of this log data and I'm setting down uh, and I have to make the decision. Do I install Loki to my cluster or Elasticsearch or both? Like, how do people evaluate and make that decision? Yeah, I think if it's if it's uh, so if it was me, um, and I'm also you know doing operation uh, in my uh, in my in my job, um, and if it's for logs, I will go for Loki. Um, I will always go for Loki with logs because that's what it has been created for. Um, after, if I'm building a shop um, and I know that some of my customer will need to search for a given world to find a specific product, I will use Elasticsearch for that to store the information of my my um, my store. But you can quickly realize, you know, the difference between the two is one of them is going to probably receive. <laughs> A lot of traffic. The other one should only receive, I don't know, a couple of thousand of product that you have, um, and and that should make it a bit more easy to easier to scale your Elastic uh, cluster compared to um, Loki. Okay. So you know, it really depends on the use case. That's that's what I want to say. You know, Elastic is very good for indexing data and finding your um, finding your uh, your items in, using using uh, Lucent queries. Um, Loki is really good at logs. That's what it does uh, at best. Yeah, so let's kind of talk about the the difference there as well. Like Elasticsearch indexes everything, I believe, and does full text search and has indices for yeah. everything. Every document that you throw into it is, is, is really indexed. Loki, you have to be a lot more explicit about what we want to index. It's not, am I right in saying that Loki can index stuff? I just have to tell it which fields I, I care about. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So by default, um, like you like you've seen, when we install it with Elm, we choose you know, a couple of a uh, couple of labels that we think are good out of your own label from Kubernetes. But you can configure that. You can add more. You can extract directly from the log line the label, like the label. If you want to have the label, you can extract uh, a bit more. You can do that. But by default, usually for most of the people, it should be fine. You know the, the, what we what we have configured here. Okay, uh, we have a, another question which I think leads in nicely to what we want to show next, which is kind of maybe dashboarding and such. So Frank has asked, uh, is it possible in a custom Grafana dashboard with a logs panel for a filtered set of Loki logs to activate this expand functionality like in the Explore view? 
Yeah, I yes. think it is. So <laughs> I think um, if, if the question is, can we have this query uh, here um, inside a, a dashboard? The answer, the, answer, the answer is yes, we can have that. Okay, let's let's take a look um, at the dashboard and stuff then. So, should we build a dashboard with a, a mix of metrics that, and log data? Or just a really simple yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a let's do that. Um, All right. So, do you want me just to click create dashboard? Yeah. All right, so, uh, and then we want to add a panel. I Other, guess. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with a, a metric. So, look at promoters maybe if you want to add a metrics. Okay. So you need to select yeah Prometheus. Prometheus. Uh, metric. I think you, you think yeah you can find one. Um, I'm thinking what we're gonna have here. Oh, we have C Advisor running. It's good. You can look at CPU from C Advisor. Oh, it's just <laughs> <laughs> that's the, uh, maybe it's container. Maybe it's container. Um, yeah. Load average over 10 seconds. Yeah. Zero, but it is a metric. So, uh, and then just apply. Yeah, the other. Yeah, we need to. Um, I'm not sure this was one. Uh, right. A great one. A the load average. <laughs> the, the load. Yeah, that's the was what I was thinking. Um, as, yeah, CPU, CPU is not a bad one, but um, yeah, let's take a node one. Node. Um, or we can do a palm tail, like a, a palm tail total line receive, something like that. There is a palm tail somewhere. I've seen it. Because um, yeah. we, we, yeah. And then what do we have? Log yeah, byte total is not bad. Log entry, log bread byte total. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so you, you want to uh, rate and sum uh, all of this. So sum parentheses um, rate. Yeah. Um, so if you want to buy, I think a pod will be uh, will be there. We can do pod most likely. You can do sum buy. Don't. Yeah. And then the rate at the end uh, uh, before. Yeah. Right here needs the until yeah five minutes good or one minute or. <laughs> I did aggregate with some. Yeah, no, put one minute. I think it's better. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, maybe the. It was working earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I broke it. Maybe it's the, the, the part that doesn't exist, possibly. But it was returning data, right? <laughs> That's not a good query. Um, if yeah, go back and just do a sum, right? Like without the bipod, remove the the bipod just to make sure that we're not missing. Um, yeah. Uh, are we still on parameters at the top? Just call up. Uh, I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, I broke it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's just leave so, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, rate, rate should, be, should, should give you like the per... Um, the change over time, per, yeah. Yeah, the change over time. Um, uh, and then there's not a lot of... There's not a lot of necessary, so the rate, rate yeah. Well... Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, maybe one minute was uh, was not a good idea. Maybe you need something bigger because if the scrape interval is too small, then yeah, that could cause a problem. But yeah, five minutes is good. So that's the and that's in in bytes. So I think in in the fields um, next to panel, you can put bytes there if you want to make it more uh, more fun. So there's a field tab. So you're on the uh, panel tab next to uh, the panel. There is like a field, yeah. And then in unit, you can choose. Um, I think it's data or byte. Yeah. I see, yeah. I see, yeah. Yeah. So that's the rate of um, logs that we receive over time, which, you know, is a good burst at the beginning, but then after it's 
a bit less, but yeah, you can look at the last uh, last hour maybe instead of six hours, so it's gonna look a bit better. Yeah, that makes more sense. There we go. All right, so that's uh, that's a metric from Pomotive's metric uh, metric panel. Uh, now what we can do is add another one, and let's let's put the logs of uh, Pomtail next to it. Um, so panel, if you go, so you click on Loki, and then um, on visualization on the far right visualization, this yeah, you can choose a log panel somewhere. Logs, yep. All right, and now let's do um, name Pomtail if you have it. You should have it. No, so I think it's because we don't have the name, so it's app. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, you should use consistent uh, labeling name. <laughs> yeah, there's app, there's name, like there's us. case app. It's just it's so variable. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then I'll just yeah, show sure. log. Here we go. Um, so let's uh, try to see if we can uh, find something a bit better, like um, find the errors or um, uh, try to to pipe into uh, like tail. Yeah. So uh, pipe equal tail. And then look for the word tail. So just to show that we can do a search here. Um, so it's I think tail is a uh, yeah uh, uh, not a capital T. Yeah, you can do that, but it's yeah, tilde, yeah. Nice, and you can save that. Um, yeah, and you can usually, I like to make my uh, my log panel uh, a bit bigger. So use, it, use a single row and make it, you know, use the, 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 whole, uh, the whole row, it's much better. Nice. So that, yeah, that's a that's a that's a beginning, you know. But you can build very uh, interesting dashboard. Um, oh, nice! And we just I filtered the, the so when I yeah. <laughs> sorry I did a zoom on the metrics, then I actually I zoomed in on filtered the, the logs as well. Yeah, so you can see the logs that uh, if there were any logs that contain tail at this moment in time, which is kind of nice for errors, right? Um, I don't think we have any errors, but maybe we can find some. But uh, it's kind of nice to see when you have an error, can you correlate that with a metric and find the metric where the error was happening? So uh, being able to mix the two is kind of nice. You know, it's being able to mix two different signals. Um, nice. I like that. Yeah, and you can jump directly to explore. So when you uh, when you have a dashboard like this, uh, when you click on the uh, on the panel at the top, the panel title, then you can go directly on explore from that query. Uh, you can do explore here, and it goes to explore, and you can start exploring. Yeah, save it. <laughs> <laughs> That's our work. <laughs> yeah, I need to ship this to prod layer. So there we go. Yeah, yeah and I get and my. You keep, and you keep yeah. And you keep the query, and you can maybe uh, improve the query, and you know um, try to find a bit more uh, information for for what you're looking for. Nice. Um, I'm I'm amazed to see that those logs are st the the palm tail one are still uh, uh, in the in the wrong format. Uh, I think this was we changed the configuration at forty five. Okay. One forty five. Okay. So it's, I, can we we could restart palm tail if you want. No, no that's okay. Can we look at the uh, can we look at Loki Loki logs for instance, maybe? Uh of course we can. Yeah, up look yeah. And then remove the remove this, yeah. Now you're getting good at uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um yeah, I wanted to show you a bit more uh interesting queries that we can do. And because I know a lot of Loki logs, um obviously I expect developers to know a bit more about what they are logging. Uh, so that makes it more interesting when you uh, when you want to play with your logs. So I know that Loki is kind of like logging every time you make a query. Uh, it's, it's logging the query itself. Um, and I want to show you like let's let's try to show only that. Like let, let's let's imagine you you have a database every time someone does a query. You want to create a dashboard that shows all the queries that have been made by the user, right? So um, let's use the equal here. Let's use the equal instead of the yeah equal, and then um, use metric that go, and then there's a comma. You can see in the first line, yeah, metric that go. There's an asset metric. Metrics. It's my accent. <laughs> yeah, and then run that. And we're going to be able to find, so yeah, 
And now we can see only uh, the log line that are showing metrics, right? So what's nice here is what we can do is we can start using and pass that log line. So we haven't done that yet, but let's let's do that. So this this log line is in log format. That's what we call log format. So it's a key value pair. It's a key equal uh, value and then space, another key equal value. It's very uh, human readable uh, as opposed to JSON. Um, and in the query, let's um, let's look at currently the, the uh, let's add a pipe and then log format. So L O G, yeah, it's going to suggest it. Yeah, this one. Right. So hit enter. Now, if you look at the labels of any of those log lines, you're going to see that something has changed. And there's way more labels. Yeah, there are. Um, and that's, yeah, and that's basically um, all the key value pair of the log line itself. They have been extracted and you can now use them as labels. So that means you can aggregate, you can use them to search, filter, uh, and, and we can even transform some of them into uh, metrics. Um, so you can see there's a status here. Yep. Uh, 200. So you could technically do a rate uh, per status now. If you wrap everything with a rate, a, a sum by rate. Um, so you do sum by status. And then you need the uh, you need the um, yeah you need the bracket at the end right after the uh, yeah square bracket right after the end of the log uh, queries. Uh, it's inside yeah exactly yeah. Here we go. So we can see by status now. All right. So nice. status is not a label. <laughs> <laughs> this will fail. So in theory, let me. Face this back. We sh we should be able to see some failed ones now. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I don't know if we show them as a status to. Um, I think the four hundred. We don't. We just. Um, this is a code that doesn't get triggered uh, by four hundred. Um, so that's uh -huh. why you don't see it. You don't see it there. It will actually need to crash uh, to see it. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can add another query and and look at the query dot go. Um, uh, yeah, click on other query and then uh, copy this selector uh, with uh, yeah everything except and you can look at if you can see now the 400. I don't think you will see it. But remove the sum by and the rate to see the logs. Oh, to the logs, right? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, let's let's look at, let's look at the logs. See see if uh, all the, the the bad queries that you've made will uh, will show up. Yeah. I like I like to have like always like two queries when I'm crafting queries. One to show the logs so I can see what I'm working on, and one which is the the metric one that I'm crafting. Um, can you see? No, you see it doesn't um, doesn't actually show. However, there is one label that is interesting. Is uh, you can see the type query type. There is uh, metric yep. and there is probably filter. So you can, if if you change the sum. Uh, by status to change it by query type, you're going to see different uh, type of queries instead. Does it show you the number of results for a query? No. 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 Not, no. But it shows you all those, all those things. So at the top, yeah, change the status, uh, send by query type, query underscore type, yeah. Ah. And now you can see that there's different, uh, different query, type of queries. Limited query. Uh, yeah, limited is a search and, a and filter. Filter is also a search. Um, so that's, yeah, so you can see the different type of query that, uh, that have been made. And you can imagine, you know, if you were SRE, there's a lot of information that you have in your logs and you can aggregate now uh, on, by extracting those labels. Um, yeah, there's a uh, there's there's more that we can we could do. We could look at uh, how to use those, uh, those um, numbers. You see the duration here? Inside the log line, you can see that the, the that metric uh -huh. took four milliseconds. Yep. We can use those to maybe graph a quantile if you if you want. We can do that. Okay, can we uh, contrive something? <laughs> so we have when we use the log format uh, mm -hmm. here, we're bringing in a whole bunch of extra labels into our um, each record in the stream. Mm -hmm. 
which means that we have access to the query itself. Could we contrive mm -hmm. a situation where if we query for raw code and then count the occurrences of that search over time and then that way we can do loads of them, stop it, loads of them, just to try and see how this works together. Because I'm curious, like we've not told it to index the query, right? That's something that comes in from the log pump. Yeah. Okay. And it would be a bad idea to index it because, you know, the cardinality of it could be very high. <laughs> uh, so don't do that. Uh, however, the log format, the pipe log format that you did is doing that at query time is, is uh, actually extracting the labels uh, from the log line. It's not coming from the index, but you can still use it to um, run aggregation. Yeah. So if I add another query here and say this, and then say where raw code. I mean, the first time I run this, we're going to get nothing, or maybe itself. I'm not sure. Nothing, I think. Yeah, like, it's mixing the two. Yeah, oh, it's, it's mixing, mixing the, the two. two. In the single... <laughs> yeah, you can hide it. There is a there is a button on the yeah. You click on that and it's going to hide it. Okay, so now not I've got late. that one request for raw code. <laughs> if I do it again, we should see two. Right. Okay. So we can like fake the rate essentially by just yeah. You can yeah. Uh, all right, so shall we try and rate the searches for raw code every five seconds? Yeah. And then that will give us a draft. So I'm assuming if I just come in here, uh, query mm -hmm. uh, raw code five seconds. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Five seconds is, uh, is a bit low. You need to make it, make it bigger because this is a range that it's going to search for. Oh, this is the... Oh, okay. I thought it was how many... I thought I was doing a rate over uh, five seconds. Okay, so let's do five minutes. We should return them yep. all. Uh, yep. So what's that rate over? How does it determine the window? Um. So... The the, the 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 window is uh is the, the at the top you know the time selector that you have um so currently you are on what an hour i think so it's going to split the hour into multiple points and for each point it's going to look back at five minutes yeah so it's an hour okay so why did five seconds not show me how many set how many searches for record i had oh, oh it did we were just it does on an it does yeah but you're gonna miss <laughs> My point is, you're gonna miss a couple of them if you if you do just do five. You're gonna see some, but you're gonna miss a couple of them. Okay, so because five seconds, um, if like you, you don't know what the interval is between each point, so it's exactly like Prometheus. The query, so this is a query range. A query range is basically uh, uh, an instant query that is executed uh, for a given step. So every depending on you know the the, the 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 interval the total interval so if it's a one hour it's probably going to do 60 step uh one for each second looking at five seconds yeah you're going to probably hit all the the points but if you are looking sub second you will miss a couple of data because for each point you will not, not look at all the point in the same in the window okay and uh, that makes sense I, i've got one follow-up question then so uh this i completely understand this we've got disabled right now so i'm going to ignore it but here we're just searching the entire log line for raw code uh can i only search the query and i guess that would come after i do the log format can i then how would i only search on the query field for raw code yeah no that's a that's a good uh, good question so all the labels that you have extracted now can be used here um, so you can use a uh, query equal, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, and that's like th this is um, more. It's less fast, you know. It's it's a, it's a bit slower than doing like a pipe search because pipe search are really the first thing that happen. But if you do a search here, it's gonna happen after the log format. So he still needs to process all the log line one by one. Yep. Uh, but it's not a pipe equal. It's pipe this time. Just pipe, and then here you can add any labels that you want, uh, and there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, so let's start with equal the name, yeah? Like that? Yeah. yeah um, you, I think you're gonna need to uh, hide. No, you hide it, yeah. Let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's remove the, the log query, plus it, it looks like a, it's not having a good time. <laughs> 
<laughs> remove this query? No, the no. the first query the, at the top, mm. like the, 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 this one. Yeah, I think that's the one uh, struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't find any. Maybe you need to look back. Uh, in... uh, let's just try. Let's just yeah. make sure. Let's make sure that it's query equal. Ah, oh, you see, there's like a, yeah. Query, ah, I think it is. Uh, so yeah, is, there, is, is there a special yeah. syntax here? I mean, is, is this just a, a regular filter? No, no, okay. no, no, it's a, it's, it's a label. Uh, we call it label filter. So you need label equal on. Yeah, but it's in its the, yeah, in its the part. The, um, yeah, that's not going to work. You need the, yeah, you need to know if it's a string. So, yeah, no, don't, don't, uh, yeah, that's not going to work too. <laughs> I'm just going to keep typing. No, I think you should. It sh it should work the what you did at first. Like let's try again. Um, yeah, you uh, need to, uh, to, to it? quote it. Yeah, yeah quote it. Um, can you increase maybe the window? I don't know. What's the? Is it one hour? Fifteen minutes. Thirty minutes. Yeah, it's not coming up. Uh, so um, let's try let's try duration um, instead. So let's try duration. And then you do uh, uh, below five seconds, S with S. Do we, yeah. All right, so can we see the, those log lines that you're trying to find? Yeah, so that... Ah, because it's query. Yeah, so there's one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because uh, the label one, uh, like equality, is a, a real equality. It's not like a grep, right? So the query, the real query, is app equal low key log format query. You see what I mean? So you need to do uh, like a regex. So you can you can um, filter with those now. So you can do a or if you want. Oh yeah, I do this. Or you can just, yeah, that's gonna work. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it should have, it should have worked. Um, why is it not working? Hmm. Yeah, I just try Loki it... instead. Try try Loki maybe instead of uh, yeah, just to see if. Uh... Huh. Yeah. So is the label query exist? Now I'm now I'm uh, curious. Can you uh, yeah, remove everything? Look at just this. Yeah, look at the labels. So let, let's build. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. We need the metrics. Yeah. Let me do uh, equal. Yeah. <laughs> what? Wait, maybe the quotes. I didn't need the quotes, right? No, no, you need it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you need it to, to say it's a string. But that was working, right? That was fine. Um, that's just a basic query of find raw code in my logs, I thought. Oh, what have I yeah, done? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm also uh, impressed that it, it doesn't work, but it should be working. Um, <laughs> Uh, when in doubt, yeah. let's just go back to explore. Like, uh, okay. And what we were going to do yeah. was uh, app equals okay. And then let's get all the logs for the last 15 minutes. And then. Oh, we can see it here. Yeah, we can see here. Do a log format to see the labels if we. Uh, I, for my own sanity, I just want to walk through those things that didn't work. I don't know why they didn't work. Yeah, yeah that's I think Ofrana was a little confused. Okay, that's better. All right, let's blame Grafana. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have query here. So what we were saying was, so, this is a yeah. global search, but we want to do an yeah. individual filter search. And you're saying, yeah, I so, can use regex. Yes. Like so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't want to. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's maybe uh, let's try, just move on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't want to. But you can do... Um, 
Yeah, the query, the query was there. Just I'm, I'm uh, if you click on the log line, yeah, click on it to see the labels. Query, yeah, it's the. Well, the duration one worked. Let's try uh, level info. Yeah, let's try level info because this is going to be equal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, that works fine. That works, yeah. I think there's a mistake somewhere in the query that we're, we're doing. I'm going to try this. Yeah, too. this is. <laughs> yeah. Try, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, something wrong with that potentially. Okay. Let's just yeah. ignore that. Uh, but info did work. Okay, so once we've got log format, we can then query individual labels yep. within the data. Of course, you were very clear that there's a performance penalty for this because this all happens on the stream in real time can yeah. be a little CPU intensive, but that was uh, yeah. really, really cool. Okay, but that, nice. Yeah, but that's what Lucky has been built for, right? It has been built for you to use uh, resources when you need it to, not when you're ingesting. Um, so when you query, we expect you to burn some CPU because you're going to scan data. You're going to scan a lot of data. Yeah. There's you know, a little index. So since the index is very small, we expect you to have, have to need to do those scan to find what you uh, want, to, want to find. Um, that we can rewrite the log line, so maybe uh, we can we, we can look at this. If yeah, you sure. Want. Let's let's do it. So right after right after you can pipe and there's a, a, an operation name uh, line format, and it's using your favorite uh, Go. Um, wow. <laughs> Go template. Uh, <laughs> Go template. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. So let's try dot query. Uh, yeah, label. Yeah, for instance, uh, I think you need the. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, oh yeah, that, I think you. I think yeah. it needs to be. Yeah, I think you need to. Yeah, exactly. All right, just... so you can even add a smiley if you know how to uh, to do an image con. Um, I actually don't. Oh, you know how to. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, I didn't walk. Oh, I, I don't know what's my the... emoji. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It should be working. I, I use it uh, a lot of time. Let's try. Uh, but more. you can see the log line is uh, is. Re yeah, I don't know if the yeah. No. Oh well. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't want to. But we, but you we can do see get there. Yeah, sorry, on you go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that's that's pretty cool because you can um, use this format. Um, if if the log line were not very sane, you can parse it, rewrite it, make it more readable and you can use that in a dashboard again you know if you want to have like a table showing only duration or only um, but, information that you want yeah that's what i was as soon as you showed me the the, the line format here and i kind of seen what we were working here i was like oh we're, we're now able to build like tabular data so does that mean can i change the visualization on this to to be a table like if i change the <laughs> Thing. I don't know. I don't know if we support that now. Uh, no, at, at least not in Explore. Uh, but I think in a dashboard it it works. But I'm not one hundred percent sure. We can give it a try if you want. But it needs to be oh, a dashboard. My emojis have broken Grafana. Broken, broken Grafana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to copy this query. Uh, let's go back to our dashboard that we built. Um, I'm sure I could have just added that to the dashboard, but my Grafana is is not great. All right, let's do add. Uh, let's just do row. Nope, that didn't do what I thought. Okay, panel. Better. Uh, we want to do a Loki query. We want to drop in this. We got a line format which needs. Um, and we did. Let's do level. Uh, query was it query status? No, it's just status. Uh, right? uh status, yeah. And then we'll do the query. You can even add labels that are from the index if you want to add uh, the app uh, or the, the the container from which container it comes from. There's a you know all the all the labels are, are available. Okay, so we can um, well, we can probably just take off the raw code. Yeah. Uh, the envo is not really doing much, but let's just take it off anyway. Yeah, not all the log lines gonna have this um, this query label, but that's okay. Oh, and it's actually offering to switch to a table. 
Oh, hunter thing. Ooh, never seen it. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> so it actually detected that we had. Uh, oh no, but it's not got the fields that I told it to have. No, but maybe <laughs> you can change. Maybe you can change the. Um, yeah, I'm not an expert on that. On, on that, but I think it's possible to select like the in the transformation, like the labels as a, as a field, maybe. Well, we do have the, the logs in exactly yeah, the format we... that we expect. Uh, let's try that again. Oh, no, okay, this is yeah. the line. Okay, so we probably have to swap the, the line. line yeah. again. Okay, got it. Yeah. So pretty. But cool. I think I, it's it's a it's a nice uh, feature feature request. You know, I'll I'll, I'll take this back <laughs> uh, to the graph machine. Nice. I, I like it. Um, there is one last thing that we haven't that we haven't really show uh, about the language is okay. extracting um, value uh, like a numerical value from the log line and use them as a metric query. That's that's the last most difficult type of query that we can do. Uh, but they're really cool because there's a lot of people out there that have like a counter or um, you know uh, speed or, or duration in their log line, and they want to maybe graph the average uh, or things like that, uh, or the quantile, or the max, or the mean. And we can do that with Loki. All right, do you want to walk me through it? Yeah, so you don't need the, the this this uh, line format anymore. Everything can, can be uh, can be removed. Um, you just you still need the log. Uh, the line format you don't need it, but you still need the log format because we want to use one of the fields. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the unwrap. So it's U N W. So U N yeah wrap, and then the name of the label that we want to unwrap. So unwrap means use that label as a sample value. Um, let's use a uh, maybe duration. So it doesn't need parentheses. So yeah, to remember that is very easy. Everything about the log line, you know, it doesn't need parentheses. It's all uh, all a uh, pipe, okay. right? So, and right duration. We need to make sure that it's only um, it's uh, yeah. So let's do an average over time of all of this. Average underscore uh, over time. So you need the year over time, yeah, over time. Um, and then you need, yeah, but the, the, the bracket needs to be inside. And you need at the end to add a buy. Let's do a buy, um, I don't know, buy pod. Yeah, it's a buy pod. No, just buy and then parentheses open and close. Graphana is, not, is, is disturbing us here. Just buy uh, and, and, and close into parentheses pod. Uh, sorry, I missed that last bit. Um, yeah, uh, just to uh, add, uh, so remove bytes oh, right, okay. and add uh, parentheses, open parentheses, uh, and then part. Yeah, that's so there will be probably errors because duration um, doesn't really um, exist on all the log line. Um, so there's two options either we can skip those uh, or we can filter them manually i think skip is better so at the end of right after duration you can add another pipe and there is a special keyword for the errors it's underscore underscore error underscore underscore and we can do equal uh, empty uh, string so that means we're going to consider only a log line that doesn't have an error because the error label is basically added every time there's an issue passing the log line. Um, okay. So that should that should be uh, working. Uh, you need to switch that to a graph, I believe, uh, yeah. uh, on the visualization. Yeah. Um, Right, so it doesn't find any, any anything, um, and it's it's because duration. So this is going to be confusing, but duration is a uh, is in a format. Um, it's in Go duration format, uh, and so we need to tell the unwrap how to uh, pass that, and you just need to enclose duration with duration again. Uh, so open parentheses here and add duration inside the parentheses. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, normally you will <laughs> name duration. <laughs> you will name your own uh, duration, uh, but that's the reason why. It's, we need to tell it. If it's bytes, so there's another one, which is throughput. Uh, and you can switch if you want. You can do uh, the first duration. You could switch it to byte. 
uh, with S at the end. And then duration by throughput, yeah. And this is going to be the average throughput per query in bytes. Okay, so um, we have a label selector with a log format. The unwrap is extracting one of the values from the log lines where we're telling it which type of value it is. So we try doing a duration duration, and we also tell in it that throughput is it bytes. We're then piping yeah. through to where error equals zero just to filter out any lines that didn't have a duration. And we've got the average exactly. over time by a five minute uh, window. And then we group that by pod. Easy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, that's a very powerful query because um, it, the, the throughput here is actually a value that is inside the log line. And I can aggregate all the value of the throughput that exists in my log line to see, you know, over time how it looks like, like the average. Um, so this is in bytes, uh, but that, that can be very useful when you're looking at duration. If you want to do, you can even do a quantile uh, on top of this. So things about uh, Nginx um, uh, log line that, you know, outputs the duration in second. And you can get the average uh, latency in second without having to instrument with Prometheus, right? Just with the logs. By using the quantile, I can see what are 99% of my requests returning under to see when I've got major performance problems or yeah problems in general, I guess, to be fair. Okay. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, there's a lot to cover with Look. <laughs> <There's, laughs> yeah, the, yeah, there's a lot, yeah. Uh, but I can I can already see where it fits in to my to my stack. What I want to be doing with it, getting all those logs from my containers into it. The ability to work with both logs uh, and aggregations of them into metrics, I think, is is almost a superpower. I love being able to have that side by side in a Grafana dashboard and really help just increase that you know understanding I have of all my systems. So yeah, yeah, awesome, very cool. Thank you for for coming on and sharing that with us today. Yeah, I think that we did uh, we did good. I was expecting more uh, more issues along the way, but you did well with uh, your community skills. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you raving off all of those queries definitely kept things running smooth. So definitely appreciate that. Uh, although yeah. we'll need to work out what happened with that little magic equals regex we had in our labels. Yeah, I'll, I'll open an issue yeah. for you. There you go. There's my contribution. For <laughs> nice, <today. laughs> nice, love it. All right, well, thanks a lot. We, we don't have any more questions, but you know, to the people watching, thank you very much for, for tuning in. And I hope you can see the power and flexibility of Loki. I hope you get it deployed to your systems. Feel free to ask any questions uh, on the YouTube chat and the Discord or reach out to us on Twitter and we'll do our best to help you out. Uh, Cyril, thank you for joining me again. It was uh, great just to go through this. Uh, you have a really good talent yeah. for just guiding and explaining things as you go. Thank you for doing that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice day. Thank you for having me. It was very right. nice. I enjoyed it. All right. Have a great day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.